Saints, welcome on board Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas, the newest ship in Royal Caribbean's fleet and the largest cruise ship in the entire world. We are here for the seven night inaugural sailing. So if you're interested in more information about that or seeing some of our videos, be sure to check out our Wonder of the Seas playlist on our channel. But for today's video, we want to take you around, give you a full and complete ship tour. We will show you every single public space on this ship. Spa, kids, teens areas, restaurants, bars, everything, you name it, we will have it in this tour. So we're gonna go deck by deck. We're gonna head down to deck two, not deck one, deck two, and we'll start working our way back up. So let's go ahead and get it started. Our tour of Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas begins right now. So one of the first things I wanna show is the new elevator system. It is a touch screen, and it has all these cool icons to help keep track of where you're going. Help you navigate and help make sure you don't get lost on the world's largest cruise ship. All right, so we will begin on deck two because there is no deck one, at least not for guest access. So at the front, we just have the boarding area and the escalator when you get on and off the ship. Here in the back midship, we also have a boarding area and escalator, elevators area, of course, but we want to turn because we also want to find our medical center. So that's here on deck two, aft or midship, I guess you could say, you take the midship elevators or stairs down to deck two here and you'll find the medical center. No need to go in, we don't want to disturb anyone in there, but should you need the medical center, hopefully not. But if you do, this is where you'll come. They have the hours of operation posted right there. And just like that, we have finished deck two. Let's go on to number three. All right, up to deck three now. And as we see here on our map, we only have a few things to look at here on deck three. Most of it just kind of staterooms and some uh, backstage crew areas, but there are a couple of notable things such as the main dining room. So this is the first floor of the main dining room because it is multi-level. Let's go ahead and head inside here and take a look. So here we go, look at this beautiful flower chandelier up top there. They come in, got like a uh, red and gold kind of color scheme in here. Art in the back there, nice big installation. Large chandelier up top. And as per the usual with main dining rooms on Royal Caribbean, like I said, multi-floored. So deck three, deck four in the middle there, and then deck five at the top. And they will usually separate these. Uh, one floor might be for my time dining, the others for set times, some vaccinated, unvaccinated, different things. But you have the large porthole windows uh, along the walls there on the sides. It's kind of just open here in the middle and then the portholes on that side as well. And as we head out of the dining room, I wanted to point out that they do have a digital menu board here displaying right now breakfast, but in the evening, that night menu for the main dining room. You can also find this on the Royal Caribbean mobile app as well. And this is probably also a good time to point out that by all of the elevator bays and stairwells, for the most part, you can find these digital touch boards. These are the wayfinders. They can help you find your way, of course, give you information about the day like the port the time weather things like that upcoming events they do have deck maps that you can flip through and see the different layouts of each deck you can type in different kinds of things if you're trying to find a specific area so these are really really helpful again located at most elevator bays and stairwells and here's something else interesting i wanted to point out with deck three as you can see here on the map it looks like we're right here and it looks like you should just be able to go right across to the front area here by the conference center. And it even says conference room and staterooms this way. But this door is closed and it says authorized personnel only. And it was like that yesterday as well. I don't know if it's always like that. Um, I know they did have an issue with the sprinkler systems and they had to close some of the flood doors. So I don't know if it's related to that. Normally it looks like you could just around. Um, I'm gonna have to go up to four across and then back down. So let's do that right now. All right, it took a little bit of effort, but we are here at deck three forward now, where we will turn. And as we were going, as if we were going to walk back towards the aft or midship of deck three, and we will find the conference center. So you can see they have the different rooms named after different gems, sapphire, misspelled, <laughs> jade room, ruby room, emerald room, all 
for private functions, but this is where you would enter the conference center area. They have the desk here. If you need to speak to someone about arranging a function or checking in with something, they have some different offices down here as well, such as the hotel director. See, they have it marked as private function right now, press room being used, so we won't go in there right now, but uh, this is where you would find the conference center if you need to rent it out for a private function or utilize it for some kind of business space. Last thing before we head up to deck four, I wanted to point out, you'll see these kind of like diagonal stair things here. Those are actually escalators that you use when you're getting on the ship in port, or I don't think you use them when you're actually getting off. Um, we didn't yesterday, but we did use them when we got back on. So if you see that, that's what it is. But as we've covered the main dining room and the conference center, we're done with deck three. We can go to four. All right, deck four is where the party really starts. As you can see, we even have the entertainment place neighborhood here. Lots to check out on deck number four, beginning here at the forward with Royal Theater. So this is just the standard named Royal Theater. No fun, exciting names like on some other ships. It is currently closed, but we did check out the theater, even though they didn't have the production show quite ready for the inaugural sailing. We did go in and see what it was like during another show. So you can see here, got the multi-level. You can enter on deck four here or up on deck five and uh, check out all the different production shows. And turning away from the Royal Theater and heading midship slash aft, First, we'll find this nice flamingo art installation, which I really like. But I want to point that out because now we'll also start to see lots of other kind of art because we're heading in towards the Park West section of the ship where they will have the art on display or have art auctions. But there's a couple things we need to check out before we proceed any further. Starting here with the Casino Royale Golden Room. So there's a lot of debate as to what the intention of this room was, its original use, but right now it's being used as a non-smoking casino. So it's just a small casino room. You see they have a desk over there. They have some slots, roulette, looks like uh, maybe blackjack or Texas Hold'em, and then some more slots over here as well. They even have been serving some food over here, little small eats back here on the back end. They don't have any right now, but they do have like a specialty coffee machine over there. So just a small, small casino, again, reserved for non-smoking. So you cannot smoke in here, but you can come in and play and enjoy yourself in the smaller little area. We'll get to the regular casino in just a second. So just past our flamingos there and across from the golden room, we can turn and head in here into the attic. So this is a multi-use space. They might have comedy, they might have a performance of some kind. Looks like right now they're getting set up for an art auction of sorts. I really like the stage here though. They kind of built in the, the lamps and the trunks and the suitcase and the table and some kind of decor there. See, they got the screen going in the back there. So it's a pretty, pretty sizable space. I like the built-in large lamp lighting. They do have a bar in the back. It's kind of hard to tell exactly how the space is laid out right now because of the art that they're putting up for the art auction, but you see it goes on further back there as well. So again, just a multi-use space. They'll have different kind of functions and events in here. And directly across from the attic, we will find the Diamond Lounge, of course, for the uh, Crown and Anchor Society, Royal Caribbean's loyalty program, accessible by those who have reached diamond level, so diamond, diamond plus, or pinnacle. So right when we come in the Diamond Lounge, you can see they have some of the day's papers, lays out who the officers are on board, the cruise compass, different ways to save, entertainment schedule, things like that. And they will have a little concierge desk here as well if you need to make reservations or you need assistance with anything. And then towards the back here, they will have a small section of food, like in the morning, uh, different pastries. You can see they have donuts and muffins, croissants, some fresh fruit you can grab there as well. They'll also make you some specialty coffee or hot tea drinks. Oh, and they also have a couple of computers and a printer here as well. So if you have a Voom internet package, you can log on, access the internet, do whatever you need to do. If you need to print something, you can do that as well. So lots of nice options here in the Diamond Lounge. So just past the entrance to the Diamond Lounge, we will head aft and we will find Studio B. Of course, this is a mixed-use space. 
So here we are inside of Studio B. And again, this is a multi-use space. So right now set up for the all new ice skating show, 365. But you can also come and have ice skating sessions that are complimentary with your cruise fare. You could also come here and play laser tag. That's back open. Wonder of the Seas inaugural sailing that we're on was the first sailing to have that back. So lots of fun stuff inside Studio B. So just past Studio B, we have the option to go left to the starboard side or go right to the port side. And I think that's what we're gonna do. Let's head right to the port side. So as we enter the hallway, we see it says Casino Royale and Park West. As I mentioned, you saw all the art pieces back there because we are entering the Park West section of the ship. It's usually in the hallway here on Oasis Class that leads from Studio B into Casino Royale. And you see here, they'll have some information, uh, paper pieces you can grab, and they also have their Park West desk here, their hours of operation. They can assist you with all of your art purchases. So we reach the end of the Park West hallway with all of the art. The other hallway is just kind of standard. I mean, it looks beautiful, it's decorated nice, but there's really no art or anything else happening on the other side. But now obviously we enter Casino Royale and this casino is a bit different than we've seen on other ships, probably because this ship originally was supposed to start in China and maybe catered more towards the Asian market it, but they still have all of the things that you've come to know and love. So they have the slot machines, they have the big slot machines. In the middle they have table games, Texas Hold'em, poker, roulette, craps. All of your favorites can be found here. There is a casino bar here in the middle of the space. And of course this is an Oasis class ship, so the, Oasis, uh, the casino is going to be huge. So you have two sides here. Uh, you have the host stand right over there, ticket redemption, cashier. They have a drink and food prep station over here, another help desk, and then this I think is kind of more like the, I don't want to say poker room, but maybe poker area. <laughs> I'm not very casino savvy, so I'm not exactly sure what's going on in here, but you can see it's kind of a walled off area. And then you come over onto this side and you're going to see a lot of the same things. So more slot machines, more table games, they do the lotto drawings in here. They have the coin pushers. Again, everything that you know and expect to find in a Royal Caribbean casino, you will find here on board Wonder of the Seas as well. And the bar is double-sided. Oh, and this is something really cool I wasn't aware of. You look here at the slot machine. It says wireless charging. So you can put your device onto that, at least that's what it claims, onto that little spot there on the slot machines and charge up your phone. That's really cool. Also, I don't see any designations about smoking, but it does seem to be that the starboard side is non-smoking and the port side is smoking as there's much more of a smell over there and ashtrays available. I don't see any of that here on the starboard side. And we've made our way to the midship elevator, so let's go ahead and get reoriented here. So we've covered the theater, the golden room, diamond lounge, attic, studio B, into Casino Royale, the Park West hallway right over here. So now we find ourselves in the rear section of deck number four. Let's turn here and go to the port side and you'll see the signs here, Izumi, Hibachi, and Sushi. So let's head inside, Izumi, Hibachi, and Sushi. Right when we come in here, we see the uh, cool red statue there. Really like that check-in desk here in the middle. And then you're gonna have the sushi area of the restaurant over to your left. You see the tables and chairs, they have the porthole windows throughout, and then the sushi bar there in the middle. And then across on the other side, on your right when you enter, you'll find the hibachi. So they have the three hibachi tables right there. Again, porthole windows. It's not the biggest venue, but you do get sushi and hibachi all in one. And we turn from Izumi and we head back into the middle of the ship. And of course we see the sign for the main dining room. This is the entrance for deck four. It's going to be basically the exact same that we saw on deck three. It's just going to be the next level. Again, three levels to the dining room here. So we get inside, we'll just take a quick look, really, really quick look, because it's going to be very, very similar to what we have already seen. There we go. Continuing the red and gold color pattern. Do we have the uh, big porthole windows on the side there. You can see the art installations in the middle. Again, open down to the floor below and the floor above porthole windows on that side as well. And with Izumi in the main dining room covered, we have finished deck number four. It's time for five. All right, on deck number five now, and there's a lot of stuff to see here as well. One thing I wanna point out is that you'll see it says the jogging track 
all the way around there, kind of like on that promenade deck, the outer promenade deck. Also, because this is an Oasis class ship, there is a helipad here, but you cannot access it. It is not open to the public there. But there are a couple things outside on the promenade, like you can go up to the fitness center right there. The jogging track goes all the way around. You have nice aft views out the back there, and there are some stairs back there. You can also head up to deck six to the boardwalk and aqua theater area. So to access the outside, either at the uh, midship or forward elevators, you just head either port or starboard through these glass doors, and that will take you right outside. And as you can see here, runners keep left, walkers keep right. They have all of the nice signage to keep you motivated as you go along there. And they also post the jogging track information uh, periodically on the wall here so you can figure out where you need to be to get to certain areas and how much further you need to go to hit your distances. All right, back inside on deck five now. And we turn because we're in the aft. We do see main dining room. This is the last part of it. One more quick look at we'll be done with the main dining room. So here you go. You can see again, very, very similar, right? Red and gold color pattern, uh, porthole windows. Although the lifeboats are on this deck. So if you're up here, you're not gonna get as much of a view. And then it's still open here in the center only to the decks below, not the decks above this time because we are at the top floor of the main dining room. But sure enough, you can look down there and see to decks number four and three. So there we go. That is the main dining room. We are done with that for the tour. So main dining room all the way in the back or we could head outside to the running jogging track, but we're going to turn here in the middle and as the sign says, in all of its colorful glory, we are now entering the Royal Promenade. So on an Oasis class ship, the promenade is two stories. There are different things on each level and it is a lot of scattered stuff. It's like categories here. So we're gonna kind of have to bear with me because we're gonna bounce around here. Right when we come in, this is actually the shore excursion desk. As you can see, it says on the little lamps there, they do have the tablets where you can scan your sea pass card. You can view and book shore excursions while here on the ship. Of course, we do recommend doing that in advance of your cruises. You can usually get a discount and availability. You don't want something to book up, but should you, find yourself in need of booking an excursion while you're on the ship, you can do that here at the shore excursions area. I want to turn back really quick. We'll see the Voom fastest internet at sea desk. So if you need an internet package, again, same sort of thing. Recommend you purchase that in advance of the cruise, but if you need to buy it while you're on the ship or you need assistance with it, you can visit their desk here while they are open to get help with that. Across from that, you will find the port and shopping desk. As the name would suggest, this is who you're gonna visit. If you need assistance with shopping in the ports, they can get you all that information right there. Now across from those, as we enter here on the starboard side, we'll find one of our favorite venues, the Bionic Bar. So for those who don't know, the Bionic Bar is a bar that features robotic bartenders. You can see them here. This is, uh, looks like Robot Mingle. I'm gonna guess this one is Mix. Yeah, Robot Mix, so Mix and Mingle. So well, the way it works is you come into the Bionic Bar, you take a seat, it's not open right now, but when it is, they'll have little tablets similar to the ones we just saw at the shore excursion area, and you can place your drink order. And then these two robotic arms will start mixing, shaking, making, all of your different drinks that you could want. It's a really cool experience to watch and see how it's done. And then once your drink is uh, finished being made, you come up, tap your CPAS card right there, and it will slide the drink out to you. So I think what we'll do now is we'll just kind of do a loop here on the bottom floor of the promenade instead of jotting back and forth. But one thing I wanted to point out here in the middle is it kind of just looks like some empty basin here, but it is not. Well, maybe it is right now, but this is actually the landing area for the rising tide bar. Yes, that is a bar up there and you can see these columns have these mechanical lifts in them. That is because as the name would suggest, rising tide, it starts down here on deck five in the promenade and then slowly makes its way up to deck eight in Central Park. So you can board up there or you can board down here. They have the bar and bar staff on board, ready to make any drinks that you would need. It's a very relaxing experience and you get a great view. All right, continuing on now through the promenade, we will find a couple of different shops here. We have Regalia, fine watches, need to get your timepiece on like Doctor Strange. 
you can head in there and do so. And next to that, we will find the next cruise desk. So of course, this is where you wanna come and book your next cruise. If you know what sailing you're gonna be going on next, you can come on your current sailing, book your next cruise, and receive money off or an onboard credit for that next sailing. The amount varies depending on how long that sailing is and what category of room you book. Now, you're gonna be receiving the same offer that you would get at home or booking through your travel agent or whoever, except you're just gonna get that additional credit or dollars off, as I mentioned. And if you want to book at the next cruise desk and send it to your travel agent like us, you can do so. So if you're already booked, they should ask you if you want to keep it with the agent you're already using. And if you're new to using an agent, you can tell them you want it sent to us. We can also transfer it once you get home as long as you don't pay it in full. Lots of options here at the next cruise desk. And of course, wouldn't be a Royal Caribbean ship and a promenade without us showing a cool car. Going with the Mustang here on Wonder of the Seas. Continuing on past the next cruise desk, we will find a Royal Caribbean staple. It's Sorrento's Pizza, except this time it has a new look. It's usually darker bricks, things like that. This time they're going with the lighter white color palette interspersed with some nice pieces of art, nice light fixtures up there. And then I love the hand-drawn, like cartoon character looking stuff. I never meet a pizza like you before. <laughs> Different stuff like that. So this is where you'll come get all your pizza fix. They have a daily special every day that changes, as well as like pepperoni, cheese, and vegetarian every day of your cruise. And of course, this is included with your cruise fare. They also do have some Coke freestyle machines right there. If you have a drink package, you can use your uh, souvenir cup to fill up right there at the coke freestyle machines inside of sorrento's pizza past sorrento's this is actually the area that you will board the ship on boarding day so you're going to come through here they don't have all those tables and chairs there when you board but they do put them out for additional seating but i did want to point out check out the cool route 66 art they put up above it's kind of the theme here in the promenade and we really like it. So next to the boarding area and Sorrento's, we will find the shop. This is where you're going to get all of your Royal Caribbean merchandise. It has the crown and anchor on it, shirts, spirit jerseys, hats, toys, cups, mugs, different kind of things like that inside of the shop. Here in the middle, we have this giant art installation, the big silver cowboy hat, of course, keeping that Route 66 theme going. So just past the shop and next to the large cowboy hat, we will find Valeros. Of course, this is the Latin Lounge on board. You can come and listen to live music in the evening. You can come and relax. They do have a bar inside here. So if you wanna grab a drink, you can do so. They have the cool car seat photo opportunity in the back here and then lots of tables chairs and couches throughout there's the stage for the live music and nights dance floor get your groove on lots of fun happening in boleros so that's going to do it for the starboard side of the royal promenade but i did want to turn here and come forward to show you the rest of deck five and then we'll hop back into the promenade because the only thing to see up here is the top entrance to the royal theater remember we mentioned you can enter on deck four or deck five so you'll find the deck five entrances here on either side in the middle you kind of just have these windows you can see in and then again, like I said, another door to enter through there. I know there's a lot going on on this deck, so let's kind of just stop here at the map, get ourselves reoriented. So we saw the main dining room, we saw where you could go outside to the jogging track. We came in, saw the Bionic Bar, Rising Tide, and then we just cruised down this side. Now I saw the Royal Theater. So now we're gonna go back into the promenade and check out the port side. So as we enter back into the promenade here, we will see this standalone Starbucks location. So you can get your Starbucks drinks here. I think they also usually have maybe some small food options, but this is not included with your drink package. Whenever you have a standalone Starbucks location, that is not usually included. You usually have to pay additional for that. So just be mindful of that. Also wanted to point out, love the skylights in here. Looking up to Central Park, letting that natural light in. So across from Starbucks, we will find Spotlight Karaoke. This was introduced, I believe, on Oasis of the Seas as it was reamplified. So as the name would suggest, this is a designated area for karaoke. You see they have tables and chairs in here, have the nice large bar in the middle, 
And then up at the front, they have the stage where you'll come up if you're brave enough to perform karaoke. They got the mix station over there, DJ holding it down. And then they have the television screens, large ones in the back there, smaller ones mounted up on the front, and then some larger ones on the side as well. Of course, displaying the lyrics of the song that are being sung. I love the graffiti art that they have in here, but what I really, really love are these two things over here. These are private rooms. You see this one says gold, this one says platinum. So you can actually reserve these rooms. I think it is an additional cost. It was on Oasis of the Seas, but for your private party, you can come in and do a little special karaoke event for yourself, which is a really cool option for those who want to hang out with their friends, sing and have some fun with karaoke, but maybe don't want to do it in front of a large crowd. I think that's completely understandable. You would have that option to have your own private room. So that's just st staff area, storage area back there. So it looks like maybe just those two rooms here on Wonder of the Seas inside Spotlight Karaoke. Continuing through the promenade, I want to point out, you'll see these desks here in the middle. They don't have anything right now, but through various points of the cruise, they will come out, put some merchandise in here, sell you different things, jewelry, shirts, fragrances, whatever it might be at the time. So just keep, in mind, uh, keep an eye out for that. Across from there, you will find Solera Beauty. So you can go in and get your fragrances. I'm assuming cosmetics. I really don't know, but uh, you probably do. So there you go. There's the option if that's of interest to you. And next door to that, we will find Port Merchants. So this is where you can go in, buy your alcohol, tobacco products, as well as candy, snacks, different kind of things inside the store there. Next up, we will find our Cask and Clipper Hub established 2022, that's right. So this is our English style, British style pub, whatever you wanna call it. They have darker woods in here though. It's not as dark as normal. It's actually a little bit lighter than we've seen on other ships. They do have a small stage here for nightly live performances. And of course the bar in the back, lots of comfortable seating, bar stools, tables, chairs, lots of nice art up in here as well. And then they do have seating out on the promenade itself and some nice flowers in the barrels there, like the lighting up above in addition. So just past the Cask and Clipper Pub, we will find Accessory Place. See the sign says Jewelry. So it's not a very large store, but if you are looking for some jewelry options, you can head inside there and they can get you all set up. So past the Accessory Place, we will find Cafe Promenade. This is one area that is usually open 24 seven. So even if it's the latest of late nights and you need a drink or food item of some sort, you can come to the Cafe Promenade included with your cruise fare. So they'll have water here, tea, coffee, sometimes hot chocolate. They have different pastries. Later in the day, they'll have sandwiches, things like that. You can order specialty coffee drinks at the inn there. So lots of good stuff going on at Cafe Promenade. Next door to Cafe Promenade, we will find guest services. Of course, this is where you're going to come for any needs you may have, any service issues, questions, general inquiries, or help with anything you can think of. This is where you're going to come. Either they will be able to help you or they will be able to point you in the right direction. And rounding out the lower deck of the promenade, we have one more store, the collection, which they believe should be dark and hard to see. It looks like they have some sunglasses and bags, other items in there for purchase. And that wraps up the lower deck of the Royal Promenade, which means we have also finished with deck five. Let's go to six. All right, up on deck six now. I think what we're going to do here is I'm actually in the back of the midship elevators, but let's actually head forward first so we can see the upper deck of the promenade and just kind of finish that out. Then we'll head to the spa and then we'll come back and do the boardwalk, one of my favorite areas on board. So here we are, we enter the top deck of the Royal Promenade. You can see down to the deck below all the way through the entire span. As we turn here to the port side of the ship, we will find the loyalty desk. So if you're part of the Crown and Anchor Society, you have a question about your status or anything like that, you can visit their desk there during their hours of operation. <coughs> Next to that, we'll see all the ropes and the nautical decor and the piano. So this, of course, is the schooner bar on board a Royal Caribbean staple uh, piano, nightly entertainment. You can come get in drinks during the day. They might have trivia or other activities and events going on. Of course, you have the large bar here at the inn and some nice seating too. Got the tables and chairs throughout, even a little bar 
area here, bar rail seating there. But it's cool because you can kind of sit here and look out over the Royal Promenade. You can watch the rising tide bar come up and down. You can see the people going through. It's just a really nice spot to chill. And also, there's a stage over there. You can see they have the drum kit set up and the keyboard, all that stuff. So they'll have uh, live music there as well through various times of the day. So this is also a good spot to sit and enjoy that. Now you cannot go any further past this point. So this is the end of the upper deck of the promenade on the port side. Now we need to head over and check out the starboard side. All right, so up here on the starboard side of deck six for the Royal Promenade, you see the sign there it says shore excursion. So we saw all of those tablets down below, right there by the stairwell, you can see them that had the shore excursions insignia on it. But this is the main area and this is where the help desk will be in case you need assistance. But you can also use these tablets up here to book those shore excursions during your sailing. Right next to the shore excursions area, we will find the photo gallery area. This is where you can come and purchase the different photos you've had taken throughout your cruise. So you just tap your CPASS card right there, look through your photos, choose the ones you want to purchase to give you an idea. That's the price of the packages that they have here at the Focus Photo Gallery. And they typically sell other items as well, not just photos, but photo related things. So you can see over here, they have some cool picture frames, also some little toys, key rings you can have made, uh, instant print cameras, which is really nice. They also do this like, uh, I always forget what this is called, but it's like, oh yeah, it's crystal. They like uh, carve the crystal so you can put your image inside of that, which is a neat option that the hours of operation posted there on the desk in case you need to reference that during your sailing. They also sell things like GoPros, waterproof cases for phones, batteries, cables, different items that you can purchase here in the Focus Photo Gallery. And next to the Focus Photo Gallery and the last part of the promenade we're gonna see here is the Picture This Photo Studio. Again, you cannot go any further forward past this point, same as we saw over there at the schooner bar. So you're kind of stuck here, but this is where you would enter if you have reserved a Picture This Photo Studio session. You can go in, set it up. They'll get you different kinds of shots. They can take you around different places on board. So you'll want to speak to the staff about having that taken care of for you. And once again, just for clarity's sake, we cannot proceed any further forward on deck six from the promenade. So we need to go down here, back on deck five, walk through, and then go back up to six. Alternatively, we could have walked down the stateroom corridor, but that's not as fun. <laughs> I wanna see the cowboy hat again. All right, back on deck six now, but as you can see, we are forward here. So again, we were here at the upper deck of the promenade, but the promenade ends right there, so we couldn't come any further forward. As I mentioned, we could have come around through the stateroom corridor, but that wasn't as fun. I went down through the Royal Promenade, back up. Now we're forward on deck six. We turn and we find the Vitality at Sea Spa and Fitness Center. So right when we enter the spa area, we will find the Vitality Cafe. This is where you can come and get fresh made smoothies, juices. They have some small eats there as well. Let's see, here's a menu of the different selections that they might have on board. So some healthy eating and drinking available here at the Vitality Cafe. And across from the cafe, you will find the salon. So they have the check-in desk here. You can get manicures, pedicures done in there, as well as hair treatments. So lots of options inside the salon. And they also have a consultation area here if you need to speak to a professional about different treatments that you can get done. And then here is the main desk where you can check in for those aforementioned treatments, or if you need to purchase something, you can come here and speak to them. And then it splits off. So to the right, we have the Vitality at Sea Spa. To the left, we have the Vitality at Sea Fitness Center. So let's go ahead and turn to the right here and see if we can check out the spa area. Oh, and they do have products for sale right when you come to the right here and enter the spa area. So the first thing is the Smile Spa. Of course, you can get whitening treatments, different things done like that there. And then it's just gonna wrap around. Of course, very peaceful in here, very serene. It smells fantastic, <laughs> as per the usual with a spa. We have to come all the way back around here. Yeah, this one's big. <laughs> this is a big spot. It's the biggest ship in the world, right? It should be a big spot. Here we have this area labeled Medi Spa, and there are three treatment rooms in here available for use. And to access the rest of the spa, we will have to head down the glass staircase. Ah, but important to point out that they do have an accessible lift here, should you need that instead of the stairwell. 
and now we find the entrance to the other part of the spa area at the bottom of the stairwell. All right, so here we have our thermal suite area. These are heated loungers. Oh, very nice. The tile. And I uh, have the fresh towels there if you need to grab those. So next thing is we have our tropical rain shower. You can go in and use that. Sauna, okay. Plenium dry heat chamber inside of there. Oh, the aroma steam. Oh, look at that. <laughs> it's coming out. <laughs> oh, and then another cool. Yeah, another tropical rain shower there. Very nice. And this Okay, relaxation room. We'll stay nice and quiet in here. So you can come and relax before a treatment, after a treatment. And they do have some water there as well. All right, so here we have a couple suite. Maybe for like a massage or some kind of treatment like that. And you said they have single and double rooms. So this is the double for the couples, but they have single rooms as well. Yeah. Okay. Ah, and here we go. A single treatment room here. Very nice. And we'll head back up the staircase right now. So I want to thank the spa attendants for giving me the little tour there, letting us see those different rooms. I did ask about the price of the thermal suite. So I think that's what a lot of people are interested in. Obviously treatments vary, but she told me for a week long cruise for a single, and, and that's to use the thermal suite for the whole cruise, I think was 159, somewhere like that. And then for a couple, it was like two, I wanna say 239. And I think she said it was available from 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. So again, for the whole time of your cruise, I don't think that's too bad of a price to enjoy the thermal suite. I will say, wish it had a view, no windows in there, but, uh, not a bad price, all the same. All right, so now we're on the port side entering the fitness center here. So we'll head inside. They do have a high-end scale kind of thing there, BMI, and they also have a treatment area there. I'm not gonna show because someone's getting something done, but they can do a consultation, get you a little bit of treatment there as well. Now we find our fitness center. All right, so we have treadmills over there for the Peloton bikes. That's a nice feature to have there. And then what do we have here? So we've got Remnant bikes, upright bikes, a Stairmaster in the middle. Okay. And then some ARC trainers over in the back. Wow, lots of stuff here. So here we have the studio for different classes, yoga class, boot camp, Pilates, different activities in this space. Then they have a relaxation area here. You can sit, water down, take a breath. And then we have different resistance machines here in the middle. So you said you like these more because you can just take the weights off and then slide them right onto right, there right on, instead yeah. of doing the pins in and out. Yeah. Very nice. We have a free weights area, 10 pound to 100 pound dumbbells there, so a full range. And then we have another set of treadmills here looking out the portholes over on the starboard side. So we saw the port side when we came in, now we have the starboard side over here. And then the hidden room, because it's not, it wasn't really marked, but they have a full spin studio in here. So instructor led, I'm assuming. Yes. Up there, got the TVs and everything. Wow, check that out. That is nice. How many for a class like this? 14 to a class. 14 to a class. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah. Theme lighting in here. UV, Got you can get the music cranking as well. That's yeah. awesome. There, you go. there we go. There's the music pumping. So you can get the spin going, get the blood flowing. So there we have it. That's the Vitality at Sea Spa and Fitness Center. Of course, the stairwell that goes down to the jogging track. I mentioned that on deck five. Now I'm gonna head back and go to the back of deck six and we'll go check out the boardwalk area. All right, back on deck six now in the aft, you can see through there to the upper deck of the Royal Promenade, but we turn and head aft into the boardwalk. So we are always big fans of the boardwalk area. Really like the entrance on the Wonder of the Seas here. As you see, they got the different carnival ride pictures up, which is a lot of fun on both sides here. Also this cool statue of this thing doing tricks on roller skates. I will say I miss my beautiful colorful lights from Oasis of the Seas, but the pictures of the hot air balloons are nice as well. So right when we come out, we will find Zoltar. Yep, he's still here. Kind of surprised by that, but all the same. He's there right next to some arcade games. This is not the arcade, um, proper arcade on board the ship, but they do have arcade games here. Football, basketball, and small Sonic and Tails and Knuckles and <laughs> all those characters basketball there because this is right next door to Playmakers. We'll get to that in just a second. Want to turn over here though to the starboard side and show you the Boardwalk Doghouse, which I love the way they've designed and themed this one on board Wonder of the Seas. Very nice here. So this is included with your cruise fare. Come and get a hot dog. Come and get a chicken and apple sausage or smoked Bavarian 
Bavarian brat or Sicilian pork sausage, lots of options there. And you will have all your condiments available to you when they are open. Ketchup, mustard, relish, different things like that. I love the big mustard bottle right there. How fun is that? Of course, the centerpiece of the boardwalk here in the middle is the carousel, all lit up. This is included with the cruise fare as well, so you can go for a ride on the carousel whenever it is open and operating. Now, here also on the starboard side of the ship, we see all the colorful candy designs, the colorful candy tables, because it is what else but sugar beach so this is where you're going to come for your candy and some sweet treats on board this is not included with your cruise fare you will have to pay additional they do have ice cream in there that you can purchase for they have different signature flavors different toppings you can add on there and then they have grab bag candy as well so get your bag fill it up with all the different candy types that you like this is chelsea's favorite spot on board I'll also have pre-packaged candy lots of fun things you can get in there also some little toys and things like that available for purchase inside Sugar Beach. Across from Sugar Beach and just past the carousel is the aforementioned Playmakers Sports Bar and Arcade. You see they have the tables and chairs throughout here. They have all of the televisions up playing live sports. This is a specialty venue, so it's not included with your cruise fare. If you have an unlimited dining package, you will get a credit to dine here though, and you can come and get your play on. They have nachos. We recommend adding the pulled pork. They have fries, sliders, uh, buffalo chicken crunch rolls. They have wings, and of course they have drinks and awesome awesome desserts here the campfire cookie and touchdown sunday are two of our absolute favorites here at playmakers tables and chairs and tvs continuing out along the boardwalk here but you can also come inside you'll find the bar centrally located and as we head to the left here you'll find some booths tables and chairs more tv there are gonna be tvs everywhere tvs all throughout so you're not missing any of the action i really like this this is almost a pseudo owner's box look at this they got these nice recliner chairs here leather with the built-in cup holders looking at the big tvs uh i'll tell you about the owner's box in just a second we'll get to the actual one they have a billiards table here again tvs tables chairs all throughout sports memorabilia place all throughout as well let's head on over here to the other side this playmakers is quite quite large which is good because sometimes you can run out of room and no one wants that let's see if we can get in this area aha access granted so we come in here, you see they have the ping pong table, they have foosball table, they have Mario Kart racing. Yes, thank you. TVs, again, I told you, they're gonna be everywhere. Even when you're playing here in the little arcade attached to Playmakers, you will not miss any of the action. Nice big high top table here for large groups. And then we find the actual owner's box. So this is kind of like a private area. This is the most high-end area of a playmakers you can reserve this it is free you need to come talk to the staff about when you would like to use it because they like i said they do reserve it for different groups at different times you have the big tvs in here i will say this is nice but i i actually think the other area on the other end was better so to each their own i suppose but i don't know that's this is the actual owner's box so if you want to reserve that you can i think the other area personally was better Oh, and I was almost a fool and left without showing you these retro arcade games, Space Invaders, Mario Bros, Donkey Kong, Galaga, Defender! Lots of cool action going on in here at Playmakers. All right, so we're kind of pinballing back and forth here, but that's the nature of the boardwalk. So next door to Sugar Beach, across from Playmakers, we will find the kids' shop. And this is a store that they've added here on the boardwalk, and as you would Guess from the title, it's catered towards children. So they have some prepackaged candy, some toys. Ooh, Legos, I want some Legos. They have stuffed animals, looks like dolls, they even have some small clothing items, t-shirts, bags, lots of fun stuff inside the kids shop here. Shine bright. And next door to the kids shop, we see this cool diner, drive-in and die, no, diner, drive-in and eat <laughs> sign, not Guy Fieri. That's, that's a different cruise line, I think. But of course, this is letting us know that Johnny Rockets is here, your dining establishment on board, your diner establishment on board, I should say, the original hamburger, or at least so they claim. So let's head inside and take a quick look here at Johnny Rockets. Got that diner theme going on. You can sit right there up at the bar. They do have booths located throughout the restaurant as well. Oh, this one doesn't have the little faux jukeboxes. 
that's too bad. Little small seating ex uh, section inside. Most of the tables are outside here on the boardwalk. So this is an additional cost venue. So it's not included with your cruise fare, but if you have a dining package, you can absolutely use that here at Johnny Rockets. And on Oasis class ships, they do have breakfast for free. That's why so many people are here right now and almost no one is here in the evening They're coming for that free breakfast. But Johnny Rockets here on the boardwalk if you're wanting to get your diner vibe on. Now continuing on, we see something very fun right in front of us, but I'm going to hold off on that for just a second. I do want to show this cool little climber they added in here. So it's all netted off, head up the different platforms. Kids love running around and jumping around in there. Lots of fun on the climber. So the fun thing that I mentioned is the ultimate abyss slide. This is the landing spot for the slide anyways. You can see 10 decks up. It goes all the way. I'll show you where you board the slide later on in the tour. Of course, this is a dry slide. These are not water slides. You use a sack and you slide down. There's some cool light effects. It's a lot of fun. We did this on Oasis of the Seas. Yet to do it on this ship, but it's a good time all the same. And as we head out here, we will find the Aqua Theater. This is one of the key components of an Oasis class ship. So they do water and diving shows here, acrobatics, and it's a new redesign on board Wonder of the Seas. Love the glass paneling along the back. It has excellent night aesthetic with the colors at night. And of course you have your two big screens on either side to help with the show. Sometimes they'll do movies or live sports out here as well. You can also see the rock climbing wall on both the port and starboard side of the ships. And I wanna point that out because even though those are up here, you see they have the signs there because you will actually access them from this deck here on the boardwalk, deck six. Come around to your, whichever side you're gonna be climbing up on, starboard or port. And you see the staircase here it says rock climbing wall. So then you will just turn and head up there when that activity is taking place and climb up as high as you possibly can. I wanna say it's like 43 feet or something like that, the rock climbing wall. So lots of space to do that here on board Wonder of the Seas. So that's gonna wrap up the boardwalk and with it, deck number six, time for seven. Oh, and these are the parts of the ship tours that I really like. Deck seven is only staterooms. Nothing to show here, let's go to eight. All right, deck eight midship elevators is where we find ourselves right now. So we're gonna turn to the back here and show one thing that is back here by itself, which is Music Hall. We first saw this on board, I wanna say, is it Anthem or Oasis? No, Odyssey, we saw them on a couple different ones. But <laughs> can't remember where we first saw it. So we'll come in here. This place is hopping at night. Live musical performances, as the name would suggest. You see the giant stage there in the middle, dance floor as well. They'll also do various activities throughout the day. Might have some trivia or things like that. They do have the bar over here on the starboard side. I want to point out, you can go up as well. There is an upper deck. We'll check that out once we get up to deck number nine. But uh, yeah, here you go, music hall. And the best part is that you have these big windows in the back here, looking out to the boardwalk and the aqua theater, which is super, super cool. So bottom floor here on deck eight, we'll see the top part of music hall on deck nine in just a little bit. But now let's head forward and check out the rest of deck eight. And proceeding forward, we see the doors here say Central Park. It's our next neighborhood on board. And again, a staple of Oasis class ships. Here we have our map that's gonna outlay the entire area so we can see what all we're going to be checking out here in Central Park. It is kind of a loop design, so we have some stuff along the starboard side, some stuff along the port side, and then a few things in the middle. So we're just gonna loop our way around here and check all of it out here in Central Park. And then past those tables and chairs, we'll find our first venue, 150 Central Park. So this is a specialty dining venue. It's an additional cost. They do have their menu posted outside here. Let's see if we can take a look inside. So right when we come in, we're greeted with this lovely bouquet and a nice tile mosaic back there as well. So it's a smaller venue. It's pretty intimate. It's This is kind of a little bit more upscale, I guess you could say. It's definitely a nice spot for a special occasion, a special dinner of some kind. You do have seating all around there. And then the uh, check-in desk here. 
here as well at 150 Central Park. Of course, this is open air. For those who don't know what Central Park is, it is completely open air all the way to the top. And these are live plants, flowers, and trees that are growing in here. So it's a really nice spot to come, chill out, relax, get your zen on, and just enjoy. Wanted to point out here in this glass enclosure, this is the rising tide bar. We saw it down in the promenade, at least the landing basin for it in the promenade. That's the actual bar right there. So this is where you can enter and exit for the Central Park level and take it down to the promenade if you so choose. And you see that again, flowers, trees, plants, all real. Got the trellis growing right over there. And because there's a trellis right there, you have to have the trellis bar. So Want to get your drinks on at night, you can do that right here. Just little art installations all throughout and you can wind your way through the plants here. This is the skylight down in the promenade that we saw from the bottom earlier. And then this lands us here at this seating area, these tables and chairs under this cover it's it's a uh, open light but it is plexiglass covered so you won't get wet if it rains because this is Giovanni's Italian kitchen and wine bar they do have the menu right here so we absolutely loved this venue on board Odyssey of the Seas thought it was much better than just Giovanni's table the wine bar is actually right down there but yeah if you're dining here at Giovanni's Italian kitchen you do have the option to dine al fresca and eat outside or you can go inside let's see if we can take a look there so inside here you can see over there they've got the pizza ovens that's where they're gonna be cooking it all up getting you all your good eats and it's just got this nice homey feel and design in here love the brickwork on the back wall you've got the woods the nice green colored chairs here very comfortable very cozy and some delicious eats and I hope this becomes a staple the bike because they had this on Odyssey at Giovanni's kitchen I don't know if they have it on freedom or not I haven't been on that ship yet but I hope that stays now we see the outdoor tables and chairs continuing here as I mentioned this is going to be for Giovanni's wine bar so next to the Italian kitchen it's kind of a package pair uh, but they actually have some eats inside of here as well so here's a look at the inside of the wine bar. Lots of tables and chairs. Of course, your bar in the middle. Hello, gotta have the bar for the wine bar. And then they do have this little food section here. Like I mentioned, you can get eats here, including delicious pizza uh, that's also available next door. So nice option to have. Come and get a snack, come and get some drinks, and relax and enjoy. So we've reached the end of the ports, uh, excuse me, starboard side of Central Park. So now we're going to wind our way around the loop and head over to the port side. I'm going to be honest, I have no idea how to pronounce that. I am, as you can tell, not a very high-end person. I can tell it's a jewelry store. I have no idea what it is, and it's not for me to know, it's for you to know. So there you go. There's a look inside that. They also have a regalia fine jewelry here on this side as well. So all your jewelry needs inside of Central Park, as well as back down in the promenade like we saw earlier. We see some doors here. These actually go into the Park Cafe. The tables and chairs are for Park Cafe as well. Let's go take a look at that. So here we enter Park Cafe. We have our condiment station there and then our food station over there. Right now at breakfast, serving up some bagels, fruits, and uh, oatmeal, hot milk, different things over there. At lunch, they'll change to like sandwiches and salads and things like that. Coke freestyle machine there if you do have a drink package. They also have some grab and go cereal options here as well. So this is included with your cruise fair here at Park Cafe. Lots of seating over there at the end. They also have some coffee down there as well. So you can eat inside or you can eat outside. Different options at Park Cafe. So there we see the trellis bar that we talked about before. When we turn here, we'll find some more outdoor seating. Again, with a little bit of cover over the top there to prevent rain. And this is actually for Chops Grill, the onboard steakhouse. This is a specialty dining venue. So it's additional to your cruise fair. I forgot to mention Giovanni's Italian Kitchen Wine Bar. Also a specialty venue, so additional cost there. They do have their menu posted outside. Let's see if we can go in and, uh, and take a look. So right when we come in, we have a landing area with some nice flowers here nice uh, little bench seat there and you can see inside to the restaurant over there <laughs> they have plenty of tables and chairs they have the wine stored in the back there as you can imagine kind of darker lighting in here darker woods give it that more intimate and romantic feeling check-in desk here and they do have some seating over on this side as well so not a very big venue some more seats around the back here but that's about it so it's it's not the biggest of venues but they do have several tables and then that outdoor seating here at chops also you may have seen the umbrellas next to chops they also 
have them right here when you come in and out of Central Park as well. So one last look here at our map of Deck 8 just to help us stay oriented with what we just saw in Central Park. So we came in here by Music Hall, we saw 150, we saw Rising Tide, Trellis Bar, and we kind of wound our way through here to the Giovanni's Italian Kitchen and Wine Bar, then did the loop-de-doop and pull. Our shoes were looking cool, saw those shops, Park Cafe ended with chops, and then the front of Deck 8 is just stateroom. So we're actually done here with this deck, time for nine. Okay, deck number nine, you can see majorly just staterooms, but there is one thing to show here on the back end, as I promised before, it is the top level of Music Hall. So let's go inside and take a look at that. So we wind our way into Music Hall here. We find the bar upstairs, centrally located, right next to the billiards table. They have your cues, balls, racks all along the wall there with the big TVs as well. If I'm not mistaken, when there is a live performance in here, they will broadcast it on the TV so you can see it because the stage is downstairs, of course. Nice, comfortable seating throughout. I really like this idea. They have the bar rail seating all around the upper deck here. So you can sit, enjoy the live performance, or just enjoy the beautiful view. And that will do it for deck nine. Let's go to number 10. A bit of a reprieve for me because deck 10 is just staterooms. 11. Up on 11 now, let's keep this party going because deck 11 is also just staterooms. Going to 12. Well, deck 12 is not just staterooms, but it's mostly staterooms. Just one thing, to, one small thing to show here at the back end of the ship, which is Wonderland imaginative cuisine. So Wonderland is another specialty dining venue as an additional cost to your cruise fare, but it is really crazy inside as the beautiful entrance here might suggest, as the name Wonderland might suggest. And even so, if you turn here and look at the elevators, check it out up here on this deck, Got the Queen of Hearts, the Mad Hatter. We got some teapots over here. There's the white hair over there. And uh, all on the other elevators as well, though you can't see it. So Wonderland is a pretty crazy place because they do food in a totally new way. It, it is an adventure for sure. If you're more, if you're interested in see what I'm talking about, check out our daily vlog where we ate here at Wonderland. You can find it in our Wonder of the Seas playlist. Uh, let's see if we can take a quick look inside. Down the rabbit hole. But you can see they have the lights up above, the cool couch over there. They have the bar right as you come in, and then that's where the tables begin. I'm not gonna tell you all the secrets that happen here. You'll have to just check out the vlog or come check it out for yourself. Check that out, a rapid chair, that's pretty cool. Couches and tables and stuff down there as well. Or up here, excuse me, I should say. Look at that, that's kind of weird with the hands. But then you have the staircase that takes you down there. That's what I was trying to say, to the actual dining venue itself or the majority of it is located downstairs but all the same just like music hall you have the beautiful floor to ceiling windows overlooking the back of the ship looking out to the boardwalk ultimate abyss slide wonder of the seas insignia and the aqua theater so lots of cool stuff here happening in wonderland wonderland was our only thing to show on deck 12 so we are done here let's go to deck 13 oh wait there is no deck 13 superstitious maybe just a little stitious let's go to 14. all right deck 14 kind of continues our tradition here of just a lot of staterooms but there is a little bit more to see here especially at the front of the ship but we are here and still in the rear or midship area of the ship so one small thing to show around the corner from the elevators and stairs is the card room so I want to go in because I don't want to bother anyone who's playing cards, but it's just tables and chairs, just a nice space to relax, get your game on, play cards, talk with someone, read a book, play chess, different things like that. Okay, so the card room was the only thing to see midship or rear on deck 14. Everything else is going to be here forward on deck 14. I'm going to have to go ahead and apologize in advance because Royal Caribbean has changed their policies about filming in kids or teens areas. The kids and teens themselves are not allowed to film inside of these areas anymore. So if there's no one in there, they'll usually let us take a quick peek in. But if anyone's inside playing around, unfortunately, we cannot do that. But Adventure Ocean is the kids space on board. You see they have the different groups, the babies, juniors. They also have a play place, theater workshop, and then AO Kids for the older age group there so this is where you're going to enter on deck 14 forward kind of in the middle area this is also where you'll find the royal escape room 
Now, normally I would say be sure to check out our vlog where we gave a quick look at the escape room, but unfortunately we're here on the inaugural sailing and the escape room is not quite open yet. So we will not be able to show that. But we will show you kind of the entry way here to Adventure Ocean. Love the colorful wall there with all the lights on it. Very awesome. This is the entrance area for the escape room. I'm guessing if this is gonna be the actual escape room, it's nowhere near close to being done. I think maybe that's just the check-in area. And then you see we have our sign here that lists out all those age groups again, as well as some directional things. So AO Kids, six to 12 years old, of course, AO for Adventure Ocean. So we are here in the AO Kids area. So we have our activity station here. They play dodgeball and different things like that inside of this area. I think this is like an interactive thing. They can throw balls at the screen and it hits targets. They have a uh, giant connect four. So this is an active area, good place for them to get a lot of energy out. And then we come in here and this is our chill lounge area. You can see they have some couches in here, beanbag chairs. They have some cool little lounge chairs here, video games, TV set up, and they even have the interactive touch tabletop games there as well. Oh, and the interactive games you can play, you, they tap in over there. We saw this on Oasis of the Seas and it actually uh, pick up your movements and things like that you can play with there. So lots of fun in this area. And then here in the middle, we have an arts and crafts area, starting with a foosball table right there. And then you see we have some small easels. They have craft paper, drawing paper they can pull out over there. Nice high top tables and chairs, different colored paper to make those arts and crafts get all kinds of things going on. Looks like they even have some books and smaller activities in here. Oh yeah, look, they got like thread and beads and scissors and markers, paints, all kinds of things, different books for different arts and crafts activities. And then Adventure Ocean Theater. So we're now inside the AO Theater, so they'll have like different movie nights on a projection screen. And when they have the puppet shows up and running, this is where it'll take place as well. So you see the stage right there in front of us, centrally located. All these cool different little lounge chairs and seats here in the middle. I also like the artwork along the wall there, lit up trees and they got the animals and stuff. Really, really nice space in here for the uh, entertainment section. So this is the junior's room, ages three to five. You can see they have lots of toys and activities, even a little ship like playground slide thing over there. That's really cool. <laughs> Entrance to the junior's room over there. Adventure Ocean Theater right here. They're gonna do some movies and shows for the kiddos. That's awesome. And then this is Play Place. I can show this because there's no, no one in there. It's a nice playground, like a climbing jungle gym playground. That's very cool. And this is the entrance for AO Babies, six to 36 months, essentially the nursery on board. We're not gonna go in there and film because they actually have children in there almost around the clock. So it's not really possible for us to film in there, but it's just, it's just a small nursery where you can drop them off and, and they'll take care of them inside of that section. Oh, and I just asked someone about the Royal Escape Room. So they said there is going to be one on board. They're just still working on it. As we mentioned, this was going to be the space where that was going to be built, but they're not sure if it's still going to be in here or not. They still are definitely planning to have one. So when that gets put in, Someone will be able to update you. For now, that's what the placard says. No escape room as of this time. All right, so I've come around the corner from Adventure Ocean in the Royal Escape Room and walked forward. You can see the stateroom corridor there. Then you kind of just get into this area and it looks like there's nothing here or it's just a crew area. But actually, if you come around, you see this door is not even marked, but if you open it up, it actually takes you out into the solarium. So I'm gonna show the solarium in a bit more depth from the upper deck, but you can access it here via the stateroom corridor. And with that covered, that's gonna do it for deck 14. 15, up next. So here we are on deck 15 now, and there's gonna to be a ton of stuff to see on this deck. So we're here at the forward elevators. Let's go ahead and head through here to the Solarium Bistro, and then we'll see the Solarium as well that we mentioned back on deck 14. So here we are inside the Solarium Bistro. This is an included dining area on board Wonder of the Seas, located here in the Solarium. Now very, very busy for breakfast, but it's kind of usually a mix of buffet and table service. That's usually how the Solarium Bistro works. So you'll be seated at a table. They'll take your order from main courses, entrees, things like that, but then they'll have small buffet stations. I think it works a little bit different here at breakfast. This is more so of a buffet, but you do have those floor to 
ceiling windows all around the perimeter there, looking out into the solarium and some really nice vibes inside of here. Now we can exit out either starboard or port side here on deck 15 forward next to the solarium bistro entrance. On deck 15 starboard, you're going to find a hot tub jacuzzi out over the edge, the cantilevered whirlpool there. But if you come back over to the port side, you're gonna find something brand new and unique to Wonder of the Seas. Let's go ahead and check that out. All right, so we exit the doors here on the port side of deck 15. Now, if we turn right, we're gonna go right into the solarium. But I'm actually gonna take a quick detour left here and head out because I wanna show you that brand new establishment, which is the View Bar. So this is a brand new bar, like I said, it's unique to Wonder of the Seas. They added it here on the port side instead of an additional cantilevered whirlpool. And you can come here, get your drinks at night, it lights up, it looks really great. And you can take in the beautiful view of the ocean there. All right, back inside here we can enter the solarium as you see it's reserved for guests ages 16 and older so we come in here we're going to find lounge chairs all throughout the solarium they also have a towel station right inside here so you can rent towels if you need to they also have outdoor tables and chairs if you want to sit and enjoy food or drink play a game cards something like that and then of course you're going to have the beautiful skylight up above it reminds me of epcot those uh the shapes and patterns there and you have the beautiful panoramic floor to ceiling windows all the way around the perimeter as well as some cool topiary style art in here you're gonna find hot tubs pools they do have a bar centrally located wraparound bar very nice comfortable couches they have day beds you can see they have tiered pools and then even like a waiting pool with some loungers built in down there at the bottom looking out the front of the ship beautiful views of the water ahead of us and it's pretty much the same over on the starboard side as well another jacuzzi hot tub right over there day beds loungers and it just continues around and then you find your way back to solarium bistro all right we exit the solarium area we come back outside here on deck 15 what we're going to find is the entrance to the perfect storm water slide so we have two areas here one on the port side one on the starboard side over on the port side of the typhoon and the cyclone those are just your standard body slides you can see they start there at the top a yellow and blue one they circle around looks like the blue one at least has a clear section I don't see a clear section on the yellow one but I might just be missing it I will point out it does not have the colored lights effect that a lot of Royal Caribbean slides do where they put those strips where the sunlight can come in it looks like flashing lights it's just black and dark inside of those and uh, we've heard they're pretty slow as well but over here on the starboard side is one of our personal favorites the supercell so you're gonna start at the top where you do with the uh, typhoon and cyclone up there you have a clear section right as you launch down the hill and then you are going to get the colored flashing lights effect as you do the loop there wrap it around another clear section and look that clear section is hanging out decks above central park so you'll be able to look right down to central park when you do that and then you shoot around the bowl there and go around and around it's tons and tons of fun and i'll point that out in just a second from up above because this is also the pool deck that we're at right now so i want to show that from up above as well it tends to work better if we go up and look down at the pool deck so let's do that right now all right a little sneak preview of deck 16 we're not trying to get ahead of ourselves but as i mentioned the pool deck tends to work better from above but let's start here with the supercell you can see straight down into it there going around and around and around until you go through the hole and once you do that it takes you down and you slide out there at the splashdown. Right over there is where we came out on uh, deck 15, came outside right there. So you can see the first thing we're looking at right in front of us here are those perfect storm water slides. And as we look to the starboard side of the ship here, of the pool deck, we see the, uh, again, the landing area for the supercell. There's a jacuzzi hot tub with a cover there, a jacuzzi hot tub with a cover here. And then you do have the pool in the middle. You also have some lounge chairs right there in the shallow end. So you can actually put your feet in the water. Of course, you're gonna have sun loungers all the way around and all throughout the pool deck here now over on the port side it's a bit different instead of having a pool on this side you're gonna have splash away bay this is going to be the kids water splash play area all kinds of slides there's a tube slide there's an open slide they have sprayers they have little buckets they have the huge giant bucket up top that fills up and then dumps off of the ramp and then there's also a smaller play area over there next to it again loungers all throughout wanted to point out there's actually a towel stand on both sides on port side over there and on the starboard side right there 
so you can get towels from either locale. And I'm gonna continue our little pattern here of jumping ahead just because it's easier to explain this part from up above. So I have just turned around. So if I look back here, we have the, the water slides and the Central Park area and stuff. As we turn here, you'll see the upper deck of the lime and coconut bar. They have a little standalone area that's only on the port side. Starboard side does not have that. But as we look back here towards the middle, first of all, we're gonna see this cool stadium style seating right next to this astronaut statue here. And that is going to be for viewing the giant video board that they put up there playing movies at night. I have heard some people complain and from the Central Park area at night, it gets quite loud with the movie, uh, but we haven't experienced that ourselves. So just something to keep in mind. But you do have two additional pools, one here on the port side, one here on the starboard side. And both of those are going to have the loungers in the shallow end. They also have an accessible lift should you need that. All right, back on deck 15. Now, again, as I mentioned, there is a towel station on either side. So you can see the one for the port side there. But as we turn around, we'll find the lower deck of the lime and coconut bar. We showed you the standalone location up on deck 16. So there's one here on the port side, one on the starboard side as well. And there's something fun right in the middle of those. So in between the two lime and coconut sections, you will find sprinkles. This is the included soft serve on board to get your ice cream on right there at sprinkles. Oh, and actually when I was up above, I pointed at the lifeguard station, not the towel station. But the towel station's right next door there. So you can scan those out with your CPASS card. And then here is the starboard side of the lime and coconut. And as we make our way toward the back of deck 15, wanted to point out the smoking section is here, deck 15 starboard side. We always have people ask where it is. This is where you can find it. I did want to point out they have life jackets here, should you need those. But then what you're going to see on both sides is this tiered sun lounger area. You see the sun loungers there. You can grab those and chill out. They also have the hot tubs and jacuzzis built in with the clear glass so you can see through. And again, that is available on both sides. So you look across there, you see that stadium style tiered seating with the sun loungers. And then you have the jacuzzi hot tub with the clear glass over there on that side. All right, back inside on deck 15 here. Let's just get reacclimated where we are. So we checked out the solarium, perfect storm water slides, the pool, splash away bay, lime and coconut, all of that. So now we are inside here. You can see there's one big thing to be taken in at this point of the ship, which is the Windjammer Marketplace. Of course, the buffet included with your cruise fare on board. So we are big fans of this Windjammer, even though we haven't actually eaten here because it has an all new design and aesthetic to it. See these nice couches as you come in here, excellent light fixtures. They put some decor up in the cabinets up above the hand washing stations, and it's completely different in here, a completely different layout. So you're gonna come inside here and then per the usual, it's gonna split off to the right or to the left. And either way you go, you're going to find tables, chairs, and food. So different food sections. I'm gonna show them all because there's just too much to show. So as you come around the side here, you'll see all the different food stations. They are grouped all together. So you can get all your food in one area. Again, on both sides of the wind jammer. And then you're gonna have the tables and chairs there along the perimeter with the floor to ceiling windows. Now that's not really anything too new, right? That's how the wind jammer is usually laid out. But what is new is all of these tables and chairs in the middle. And you have these big floor to ceiling windows that overlook the boardwalk. So you can actually look down there, see the carousel, Johnny Rockets, all that. Look across to the boardwalk balconies. You'll actually be able to see people zip lining up above there. And this goes all the way around. Let me show you some of the other windows. Wanted to point out there are Coke Freestyle machines in the Windjammer as well. So you can see here from the back, actually looking back forward, you can still see down to the boardwalk there. Look forward to the landing spot of the zip line in the sweet neighborhood up above. We'll get to that later. So these windows go all the way around, all the way around the perimeter here of the boardwalk so no matter which way you go you can have a great view and as i mentioned you're pretty much getting the same experience on either side so lots of seating with the floor to ceiling windows overlooking the ocean on the outside and then overlooking the boardwalk on the inside and then the food is all here centrally located towards the entrance so just past the wind jammer here we will turn and head starboard again deck 15 aft but over here on the starboard side, we will find a new addition, one of the seas, very unique to the ship, the Mason Jar. Southern restaurant and bar. Check out the flowers in the little wagon. Check out the welcome home mat. They also have the menu on digital display right there. The theming in this restaurant is fantastic. So you come in, they have the check-in station here. 
and then the actual restaurant area is back this way. So this is typically where you'll eat when you are dining. See, they have lots of tables and chairs, great artwork up, nice light colors, natural light coming in from the floor to ceiling windows. It is awesome in here. Open for brunch, which is new, that's something unique, and also dinner as well. If you're interested in more information about that, check out our day two vlog from Wonder of the Seas. We did both of those, brunch and dinner. Nice cool little swing couch right here. They have rocking chairs with tables. They have some high top tables here as well. It looks like you actually might be able to dine at these tables in the uh, bar section. Over here we have the stage. They do uh, nightly live performances like the Country Crew Trio. It's playing right now. They have some windows out to the pool deck as well. And then we have our mason jar bar right here in the middle serving up drinks special to this restaurant. And opposite of the mason jar on the port side is just wrap around for the wind jammer. So you can see here it's a specialty dining. That's where mason jar is but the wind jammer wraps around. That's where we are right now. One more thing to check out here on deck 15 technically is the wonder place gate but I think that's going to be best access from deck 16. So with that said let's go ahead and head up to deck 16. All right up on deck 16 now we're going to find our sports zone and lots of other fun stuff here on this deck. So let's go ahead and turn head outside towards the aft part of deck 16. As we turn and come towards the port side though you'll see the sign for social 100 and as the little sign says there 13 to 17 only so this is a team space. Let me go take a look and see if we can go inside and it's actually empty so we can show it really quick. I love the cool artwork they have over there. Look at this. They have like a candy and soda and chip vending machine. That is awesome. Kids get all the best stuff don't they? Nice big TV there. Cool colorful lounge spaces. They have these little circular lounges that they can hang out in. Porthole windows to look out to the side. Some couches in here. Looks like they have a little library. Read a book. And then these are cool like interactive table games that they can play. It's like a big touch screen. Comfortable beanbag chairs. Some foosball tables. Lots of stuff here. And then you can see outside to the sports deck. Looks like they have some TVs here as well. I wonder if they also do video games. Might be an option. This is a really cool space. And this is only part of the teen space on board. We'll show you the outdoor section in just a little bit. But let's head back outside and continue on with deck 16. Oh, but before we head outside, just across from the entrance of Social 100, we'll turn and find these colorful sliding doors. And we'll see these vending machines. Now these are for anyone to use. And this is where you're gonna come if you need some like pharmaceutical stuff or toiletries. They'll have some different medicines, deodorants, razors, things like that, band-aids, first aid, and then they'll also have sunscreen, aloe, different kind of things like that. They even have an electronic station here with cords and batteries, walkie-talkies, and then even like a toys and games vending machine. Pokemon cards, sports cards, they have uh, little toys and collectibles inside of there, Uno, things like that. So the way it works is you just come up to the digital touch screen, find the item you want. For example, this after sun gel, then you would hit add to cart, keep shopping. Once you're done, you check out, tap your CPAS card, and it charges to your onboard account. You don't need to go into a store or do anything like that. Anything you want to come and buy is right here in these vending machines. All right, making our way to the aft of deck 16 outside. Love the colorful wall here on the outside of Social 100, and they do have some chairs here as well. They put the ping pong tables in an enclosed glass space so that the balls don't go flying all over the place. Very nice. And just beyond the ping pong table section, we'll find our basketball court, full size court. They also do soccer here, as you can see by the net right there. One cool thing I like about this basketball court, the backboards are illuminated at night. So that's a really fun option. You add some night aesthetic to the basketball court. And right next to the basketball court, we find our landing area for the zip line. Yes, a true zip line. That is something that is an awesome feature of Oasis class ships is that you can do the zip line. You see someone's actually getting ready to go right across there on that little tower. So they get you all harnessed up, get your helmet on, clip you in. And on this one, you actually sit down. On a lot of other ones, you kind of have to step up and off. This one, you kind of just sit down and then go across. And the way this one is different as well is you see this little stopper right here. Here. They're gonna push that out and so you'll actually land into that and so you don't have to try to get your feet down and run really quick See so you just threw it out there and now when the zip liner comes across they're actually getting ready to go So this will be a perfect demonstration. They'll actually hit that it will slow them down and then they'll just pull them in So the, the rider is seated now. They just kind of pull their legs up a little bit zip line right across and as they hit the stopper 
slows them down and brings them in nice and easy for the landing. And that is cool because you are zip lining directly above the boardwalk. Not for the faint of heart, but a good time nonetheless. And now continuing around, we're over on the starboard side now of deck 16. And we're gonna find something new next to something old that we love. So the new thing is the Cantina Fresca. This is the new bar that they've added here right next door to El Loco Fresh. So this is the dining area for El Loco Fresh. And for those who don't know, El Loco Fresh is included with your cruise fare. You're gonna have Mexican specialties like tacos, burritos, quesadillas, nachos. They'll serve it all up over there. You have lots and lots of seating out here. I love the colorful artwork and the colorful beams with the lights that they've added here. You're gonna have your salsa condiment bar right here. Really good eats and like I said, included with your cruise fare. And now add on the Cantina Fresca to that. You can have a really good experience. Just to clarify, the Cantina Fresca is not included with your cruise fare. That is an additional cost. Of course, if you have a beverage package, it would cover that, but a little bit separate from a local fresh. Also, another Coke freestyle machine. And here's something else new on Wonder of the Seas. It's the mini golf course. Now, mini golf is not new to Royal Caribbean, but this design is. This is a completely brand new take on the mini golf course themed under water nautical creatures sea creatures like the clam where you pick up your clubs and balls i did want to point this out because people have been having a hard time finding those they're right there and then hole number one is with the starfish and then you end up at hole number nine which is the whale here so lots of cool fun you can see all the colors it's a very new and refreshing take on the mini golf course unique to wonder of the seas and right next to the wonder dunes mini golf course we will find the aforementioned wonder playscape this is like a big playground on board wonder of the seas another new and unique feature they have slides they have climbing nets they have a giant climbing slinky you can see there's uh, benches down at the bottom for parents or guardians to, to watch the kids as they play it's a nice soft play area play area everything's padded they have puzzles and stuff let's go down and take a look at the inside and real quick as we make our way around they have this cool like little periscope thing compass spinner they have the ships wheel they can spin and then this is the top of that climbing slinky with the different platforms they climb up on and then there's like a little bouncy net as well so you can see there there's the sign for the wonder playscape and i highly recommend coming out when you're on wonder of the seas coming to the wonder playscape at night even though it may not really be open or maybe there's not a lot of people playing just come check out the lights here it has amazing night aesthetic trademark of course hop and happy travels do have these little bouncy spring play things they have this cushioned little couch area in there and then they have puzzle games all along the wall here access the climbing net there the climbing net here they have the colorful stairs and then this is the bottom of the big tubular slide there's another smaller slide up at the top they have the spinning block games here you can play hopscotch down below and then those windows are actually into the wind jammer so remember i mentioned before that it said it was on deck 15 but it was actually easier to get to from 16 that's what i was talking about interactive games here with lights and sounds and then the entrance to the climbing slinky with the different platforms so you go in and then i'll show you here what i mean kind of go up to that platform and then turn and go up to that platform and then you just keep going all the way up to the top and as i mentioned soft floor and these are all padded cushions there even the lights the lights are soft as well so uh, it's nice and safe in here shouldn't be too many injuries or anything like that it's a cool place for the kids to come let loose get some energy out and have some fun here on the very back of deck 16 we'll find that beautiful wake view as well as some bar rail style seating with adirondack chairs very nice and the entrance to our ultimate abyss slide with the angler fish there again highly recommend checking this out at night it is lit up in a gorgeous way so this is the entrance to the dry slide we talked about it down when we were on the boardwalk because that's where you'll exit it but it's a dry slide it has lots of cool light features inside of it here's a look at the mats that you'll be using so they'll give you the mat there you put your feet inside of it your legs inside of it hold on to the strap and you slide all the way down to the bottom it's a really fun experience access that here deck 16 aft and just across from the entrance of the ultimate abyss is the wipeout bar get your drink on why is it called the wipeout bar well that's because right next door here we will find our flow rider surf simulator sometimes they do stand up surfing sometimes they do on your knees boogie boarding now normally oasis class ships have two flow riders one on the port side 
and one on the starboard side. But here on Wonder of the Seas, they have replaced that with the Wonder Playscape. So you're only going to get the one flow rider here on board Wonder. So there you go. That's going to do it for our outdoor section of aft portion of Deck 16. A Loco Fresh, Wonder Dunes, Wonder Playscape, the zip line, the ultimate abyss slide, the flow rider, the basketball court, ping pong tables, all of that. Now we're going to head back inside and head forward on Deck 16. All right, just to get reacclimated here, we just did this entire outdoor section. We did Social 100 in the shops. We did a local fresh. Now we're going to head here and check out the arcade in the aft section of Deck 16, but starboard side. As our sign tells us, arcade. Just head right inside here. It's definitely a different design than we're used to seeing. The arcades on board. I love the, the video game stuff there. Got like the centipede style things on the wall. So you can charge up a game card here or use your C-Pass card. And of course, we always like to tell you, if you know you're going to play in the arcade games on board, you want to buy those credits ahead of time on the cruise planner for a 20% discount. So just think about that. They have ski ball they have racing games, Mario Kart racer here like we saw at Playmakers. They have the big bass wheel. They have the banked air hockey table. They have the pixel air hockey table. Lucky Duck. They have a shooter game. Uh, pop the lock. Different kind of stuff like that. And then they have basketball. They have soccer kicker game right there. Mario and Sonic Olympics. Transformer shooter. The basketball pro popper. They have a uh, stacker games. Key master game. Winner's Cube and uh, some claw games Ooh, with Nintendo prizes. I'd like to get my hands on some of those. And then they also have a prize hub as well. So you can redeem your virtual tickets. It will be tracked on your CPass card or on your arcade card. And then you can redeem those virtual tickets for prizes here at the prize hub. Also a huge fan of the video game controllers here on the floor at the entrance, especially in 64. All right, so now for the rest of Dick 16, we're gonna have the open outdoor section, which I'm gonna keep very brief because it is so windy today. It's just very hard to record out there, but we've pretty much seen it. It's the upper deck of the lime and coconut, the stadium seating for the theater or for the uh, movie screen. They do have those whirlpools we showed, and then we'll head forward and we'll check that, check out hooked seafood, especially dining. So let's just very quickly take a look at the outside of Deck 16. It's really just a lot of sun loungers, the standalone lime and coconut bar on the port side over on the starboard side we just have some other lounge space and then these casitas so these casitas um, have not been available the whole sailing I don't know if they're not ready or they're just not renting them or what is it I do know the sign says to visit the lime and coconut if you want to inquire about renting one of those but they have uh, each one is numbered and named it has like the little day bed lounger you can recline for two people it has the table which is actually a cooler so you can open it up put ice and drinks in it and then there's like USB charging I believe back behind the bed itself see the sign on the gate says social 100 the patio 13 to 17 only so they would just scan their CPAS card right there for that gate to open and then they could head up the stairs to the patio the outdoor section I mentioned earlier of the teens space so you can kind of see up there it looks like they might have like a juice bar or something they do have some day beds comfortable lounge chairs up there for them and there's also a small hot tub I believe as well at night they have those lights you can kind of see them strung up across the white part there they are awesome looking very colorful very beautiful so a nice outdoor space here right next to the water slides just for teens at social 100 the patio also here on deck 16 port side we do have not the paddy dive center but the tide and trail adventure gear area closed right now but uh, yeah I guess that's where you can get your scuba diving on or they're gonna do the instructive classes they have all their information posted on these screens in here so you can find this again deck 16 port side all right deck 16 forward we have finally made it <laughs> there is just but one thing to show here which is hooked seafood of course this is a special dining venue so it is over an additional cost not included with your cruise fare but it has a lovely lovely setting here on wonder of the seas let's just go ahead and take a look really quick inside here it is so much bigger than the one we experienced on navigator of the seas so many more tables and chairs they do have 
the bar here and the raw bar in the middle with to get the oysters and stuff prepared and get your drinks everything ready right here large booth seating over on the sides tables and chairs throughout and you have the floor to ceiling windows and doors over on either side as well and then you look out to the solarium and actually if you come here to the edge this is open air down to the solarium bistro down below us so just completely open air down to that and then you're looking at these huge windows through to the solarium and out also to the ocean. So great views in here. We ate at sunset last night and a lot of nice lighting with the sunshine and the night aesthetic coming in through when they turn the lights on. It's a really cool venue if you're looking for some seafood action. And that does it for deck 16. We can go to 17. Well, kind of, because 17 is going to be split and then 18 is only going to be in the back. So what I mean by split is we just walked across 16 here, the outer deck, but that's it. That's the top part of that. So you can't go from 17 here to 17 there. You have to go down to 16. All right, actually inside here on deck 17. Now we look at our map. I wanted to show you, you can see social 100, the patio, like I mentioned, the outdoor teen space. I was right. There's a little hot tub there. Restrooms. That was the only thing forward on deck 17. So now we're here midship and rear deck 17 because we're going to begin the new neighborhood on board Wonder of the Seas. So Oasis class ships are split into neighborhoods like the Boardwalk or Central Park. Now there's a new one unique to Wonder of the Seas. It is the Sweet Neighborhood. So we're here on deck 17 again midship and we turn come to the port side and we'll see the sign here coastal kitchen and suite lounge royal suite class on the glass door so we're gonna head here and go around the corner down the hall so we just head down the hall here and we will find coastal kitchen and the suite lounge in the very back of the ship all right so here at the end of the hallway we see the signage there coastal kitchen and suite lounge they also post the daily menu for coastal kitchen right here on this digital display board so let's go ahead and head inside here so right when we enter, we'll actually be in the suite lounge area of the space. And you can see they'll have uh, small bites, snacks throughout the day, different kind of things here. They also have a specialty coffee machine back there, some teas and other things that can get you. Concierge desk here on the side, get you all your booking needs, get you taken care of with anything that you may desire. Floor to ceiling windows throughout the space here, looking out both sides of the ship and to the back, very nice. And now as we come over here, this is going to be actually more of the coastal kitchen area. So this is the restaurant on board that is dedicated to sweet guests. So sweet guests here dine at Coastal Kitchen. It's a really nice option included with their cruise fare. We have the bar here in the middle, get all your drinks and things you need. And you see the restaurant just continues on over there to the starboard side as well. As I mentioned, you have these floor to ceiling windows all throughout the restaurant, taking in these great views here on the side and back of the ships you can see out to the wonder dunes and the wonder playscape the ultimate abyss slide entrance the zip line right here below us you have the flow rider on the back over there and the basketball court and then you can look down and see straight into the boardwalk ultimate abyss slide and the aqua theater lots of great views to be had here from coastal kitchen and the suite lounge and as we check our map here, again, Social 100 patio is the only thing forward deck 17. Here in the midship, we just have the suites with the coastal kitchen and suite lounge. So that means we have completed deck 17. We only have one more deck to go. Deck 18 only accessible here from the midship elevators and stairs. So let's head up and take a look. And we have reached the summit. Deck 18 is our top deck. Again, nothing forward, only here midship and aft. We do have some suites. One last thing to see here, part of the new suite neighborhood is the suite sun deck. Let's head outside and take a look. So if you take the midship elevators up here or you decide to take the stairwell, which is actually center from deck 16 up to 17 and 17 to 18, usually the stairwell's on the outer side. So keep that in mind for deck 17 and 18 access, access by the stairs in the middle. Once you're up here, you can either go through those glass doors that say suite or you can go through these glass doors that say suite. I think either side will get you there, um, at least to get to the suites. Now it does say for the suite sun deck to a uh, port side here. So we're gonna do that now. We come through the hallway and you can just follow the signs, but I will tell you as well that you wanna turn left here to head aft. See the glass doors ahead of us, the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> it's a little bit of a metaphor for a, a ship tour today. Let's head outside and take a look. So the door is open and there is our signage suite sun deck. So we'll go ahead and head outside here. We do have some day beds over there, some fresh towels for people to grab right when you come out. 
and then we do have lounge chairs throughout the suite sun deck they have the towels rolled up with the pillows right there for you to grab ready to go for your enjoyment and as you proceed throughout the suite sun deck here you'll find a lot of day beds chairs couches comfortable lounge space so here we have the suite sun deck bar located in the middle here they can get you all of your drink needs and then over here on the starboard side of the ship do have a freshwater shower as well as a wading pool and a whirlpool so you can see the whirlpool is like the top level here got the bubbles going and then it's infinity style down below to the waiting pool which actually has loungers built into the water so you can just relax in there they have the nice glass there you can look out to the side of the ship or out the back of the ship lots of great views to be had and the pool does wrap around it does have umbrellas that you can open if you're going to sit in one of the loungers and there is an accessible lift as well but check out the views that you get up here from the sweet sun deck looking down at the all new wonder dunes the all new wonder place gate you can see the ultimate abyss slide entrance in the back there you see the flow rider the zip line the basketball court boardwalk balconies down below and of course the ocean all around from each and every side of the ship and just for reference and clarity, you can access the Sweet Sun Deck from either side. We went out port, but here it is on starboard as well. Well, there you have it, friends. That is going to do it for our tour of the world's largest cruise ship, Royal Caribbean's Wonder of the Seas. We are here for again for the seven-night inaugural sailing. So if you're interested in more content, check out that Wonder of the Seas playlist on our channel. And if you're interested in coming on board Wonder of the Seas, we can help make that happen. As travel advisors, we partner with Royal Caribbean, and we can get you on board. Our services are complete completely free to you. We never have any extra costs or fees whatsoever. So feel free to reach out via that travel agent information that you can find in the description of this video. You can also visit our website, hoffmanhappytravels.com. And if you've recently booked directly with Royal Caribbean in the past 30 days and you're not yet paid in full, you can transfer your booking to our agency that is also completely free of charge as well. So we look forward to hearing from you soon. Once again, I want to thank you for joining us for today's video, but we're signing off. We'll see you next time. Happy travels!